Let's get rid of it. We love it. Uh, just a few announcements this morning. Um, the Heartland District Annual Conference will be in Soresco this year, uh, July 29th and 30th. So if anybody wants information, tell them on the bulletin board back there. So if anybody wants to go to the Heartland, the Heartland District. And the Women of the, Women of the Word will be having a conference September 17th in Heartland, Iowa. Uh, that's back there too now. Uh, there was information on that. It's on the board back there. Uh, we have 30 new hymnals came in. Um, so next time we have a problem like we did last week, we'll have plenty. So Friday fellowship, we have a job. The, the labels are made. We just have to put them in. These are going to be in honor of, of Jim Martin. You guys, everybody knows Jim's love for music. So artists wanted to do something in his memory. So, so the, the hymnals came in. So we'll be putting them together. Um, I thought I was on top of things this week. The Living Word Singers were going to sing because Kurt was here. And I find out this morning the Living Word Singers are singing next week. They got me again! That was <laughs> not your fault. I, I think we did have this weekend originally, but we had some people missing, so we bumped it back to the next week. So. Uh, I know. So we'll look forward to it. Uh, looked around and said, we had it there this time. We finally got it. Yeah. We'll be watching you guys. <laughs> now we, we, know. Could try, we could try to whip something up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Linda said she, no, she didn't say she could do it. <laughs> so, um, we do have communion this morning. We're doing our celebration service. So if you believe in Jesus Christ as our Savior, please come. Please come. Part of his meal. He says come. Uh, one last thing. There's something happened that happened today 20, 23 years ago. Yeah. And I actually gave, gave Mike the choice since his other half isn't here. Then I can think about it. Really, I don't give nobody the choice. <laughs> if something happens on Sunday, we do it. Mike was married 23 years ago. Uh, his lovely wife is at home. But we're going to sing happy anniversary to him. It's, 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 it's a rule. That's just what we have to do. So please join me and sing life and time and happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Mike and Tanya. Happy anniversary to you. And many, many, many more. That's a, a God given thing. All right. All right. So I don't think I have much else. On a little piece of paper here, and this is what I go for. So let us just prepare our hearts for worship. We'll start with a confession. We'll just start by talking together. So please prepare your hearts. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading for today is taken from chapter 16 in Acts. You'll find it on page 890 in your pew Bibles. Acts 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. From Troas, we put out to sea and sailed straight for Samothrace, and the next day we went to Neapolis. From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. We stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the gate, city gate to the river, where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth. She was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, our song for today is 
Psalm 67. You'll find it on page 465 of your few Bibles. I will read the odd verses. Please respond with the even. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you rule the peoples of heaven, God, and the nations of the earth. May the people praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest. God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still, so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Praise to God. Our second reading for today is taken from Revelations chapter 21. If you'd like to follow along, it's found on pages 1004 to 1005 in your few Bibles. Revelations 21, verses 9 through 27. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls full of seven last plagues came and said to me, Come, I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. And he carried me away in the spirit to a mountain great and high and showed me the holy city Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. It shone with the glory of God. Its brilliance was like that of a very precious jewel like a jasper, clear as crystal. It had a great high wall with 12 gates and with 12 angels at the gates. On the gates were written the names of the 12 tribes of Israel. There were three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. The wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. The angel who talked with me had a measuring rod of gold to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. The city was laid out like a square, as long as it was wide. He measured the city with a rod and found it to be 12,000 stadia in length, and as wide and high as it was long. The angel measured the wall using human measurement, and it was 144 cubits thick. The wall was made of jasper, the city of pure gold, as pure as glass. The fountains of the city walls were decorated with every kind of precious stone. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third agate, the fourth emerald, the fifth onyx, the sixth ruby, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth turquoise, the eleventh Jason, and the twelfth Amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls, each gate made of a single pearl. The great street of the city was of gold, as pure as transparent glass. The word of the Lord. Our gospel this morning comes to us from John in the fifth chapter. I'll be reading verses one through nine. Uh, you can find it on page 864 of your view of it. It's titled, The Healing of the Pool. Sometime later, Jesus went up to Jerusalem for a feast of the Jews. Now there in Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, a pool, which in Aramaic is called Bethesda, and which is surrounded by five covered colonies. Here a great number of disabled people used to lie. The blind, the lame, the paralyzed, one who was there had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he had been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to get well? Sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, Get up. Pick up your mat and walk. And once the man was cured, he picked up his mat and walked. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, all right. 
kind of what I'm guessing this morning, is it ever too late? It's a big question, isn't it? Now, if I told you that I have dreams of becoming an Olympic swimmer, yeah, you look at like that as crazy, right? You, you probably think about it. Because we all know, first off, I would have needed to start a whole lot sooner. And second, well, I don't swim well, I sink. So I have a whole, I have a big, a big hurdle for us. You see, I know at this age that it is too late for me to become a star athlete. I waited too long. So there are things that it's too late to do. But that brings up the question, what about our faith in Jesus? Is it ever too late to come to Jesus? Can we get so far from faith, so out of shape as far as faith goes, that it's too late to come back? Well, the answer to that is no. See, we can always come back to God. It's never too late to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. He's always there waiting. He's wanting us. He doesn't care how far gone we are. If we'll come back, he says, I'll take you. See, it's not a physical thing. It's not a, a thing we have to work at. It's a thing we just have to give our hearts to and say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready. But then again, as I was writing this, it dawned on me. I have to be careful what I say. For... I really should never say never, should I? You know, that's, that's a big word. Because our Bible actually tells us there is one thing that will change that statement. From it's never too late to it could be. And that's the word called death. See, most of the time, death doesn't give us warning, does it? It comes like a thief in the night. It takes us off guard. We, as they said in our prayer, we put things off till tomorrow. We put it off, put it off, put it off. And whoops, we didn't get it done. So if we wait too long to find our way back to Jesus, and death comes first, what happens next? Well, honestly, honestly, I can't tell you. Not that I wouldn't if I could, but I, I can't tell you what happens for sure at that moment. See, because that's God's call. I give all that to God. See, no, one, no human being can say, I know the answer. For only God makes that judgment. Now, we have many religious scholars that will say, well, I've studied the Bible. I, I know what the answer to that is, but honestly, they don't know. As I said, it's God's call. See, all we can do is look for our Bible for direction. All we can do is look for our Bible for some kind of an answer. And I can say, honestly, stand here and say to you, our Bible does say, be careful. Our Bible does give us many warnings for not, to not wait too long. It says to be prepared. To be prepared for that moment. See, we have to have to humble our hearts and let the Holy Spirit lead us now while we're alive. But as sinful human beings, we sometimes don't take direction while we it. I mean, it's pretty simple. We get opinions and we say, well, we know that. And sometimes, with too much education, we find ourselves believing we know. So whenever I read the Bible, I look at who Jesus fought with the most. Who was it? It was the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. It wasn't the everyday people. The everyday people opened their hearts and said, wow. But it was religious people that said, we know the answers. We've read the Bible. In John 8, Jesus is trying to get the Pharisees to open their hearts and minds to understand who he is. Now this is Jesus in person. So there is, there had been a certain 
air about the, the way he talked, the, the way he was. I mean, this is Jesus. I mean, I just wish I could ever I could have heard him talk. But the Bible gives us examples and gives us gives us thoughts of what happens. John 8, 23 and 24, Jesus himself tells the Pharisees, You are from below. I am from above. You are this, of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins if you would not believe in me. You will indeed die in your sins. See, now right there is a major statement, right? Nothing to get confused. Jesus says, if you don't believe me, you'll die in your sin. It's a hard statement. It's a hard thought. But it's one of those thoughts that's supposed to kind of shake us up and get us out of our out of our mold. But the problem was the Pharisees weren't even listening. If you read the whole story, they wanted to stone him. They said, We aren't going to listen to you because you know what we're talking about. But as I read that verse, I you know me, I see the little things. As Jesus was talking, verse 30. Even as he spoke, many believed in him. As I said, this was the Son of God. Could you imagine having him standing here telling us the truth? What is all about? How could you not melt right there? I mean, you read the stories. It's just, he was who he was. How could you not follow his word? But as I say, the Pharisees were, were hard or hard. They wouldn't change. So, back to my question, is it ever too late? We read right there, Jesus says yes. Waiting too long to believe will bring his death. Death in our sin. It's just that simple. And to have the to have the thought that we knew that we had eternal life ahead of us. Eternal life forever. If we just change our focus. So then the question comes up, how do I know where I'm at doing this? What is faith and how do I know if I have faith or where I, am I on the path of the Pharisees or am I on the path of the believers? What? How do I know? I've got to put the verse on my heart. Romans 8, 5 through 7. Now listen very clear, it's simply, it's, it's very simple, it's clear. But it's one that I, a verse that I really like. Or three verses. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. But those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law or See how simple faith is? If our minds and hearts are set on the flesh, set on worldly things, we're set on hostile, evil things. If our hearts are set on God and the Spirit, we have peace in our hearts and we have joy. I don't know how to explain it much better than that. To give yourself a self-examination of where you're at. We either follow the Spirit of God and submit to His ways, or we follow our desires our own flesh. And a good way to really understand that is if somebody tells you you have to submit, what is your feeling inside? I don't think God want to do that. Or is it, yeah, I understand. That's the difference between figuring out where you're at. The Pharisees told Jesus, no, we will not listen to you. I don't care what you say. But in verse 30, other people listened and they believed and their hearts changed. Yeah. The tough generation kids, that's as simple as this. If you wonder if your faith is in the right direction, look at how you look at things. When somebody's being mean to somebody in, in school, do you follow and say, yes, I'm going to be mean to them? 
Or does your heart break and say, that's not right? It's all in our attitude. It's all in our heart. It's all how we work. work. No. See, that's why Jesus tells us we've got to get it right now. Because if we live in his way, this world, and you've heard me say it before, this world will be really, really cool. But if we live in the flesh, it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard for all of us. No, I guess when we look at it in the long run, we can, we can just continue to do it our way. Then when death comes, we can go to the great judgment without a plea. Because if we don't believe in Jesus, he tells us, you, if you don't know me, when, I, when that day comes, I won't know you. So think about that day. Because death is going to get us all. And we're going in front of God. And he says, why did you do what you did? And all we do is stand there going, oh. Or Jesus will be with us. And we can say, well, I did what I did, but... I'm sorry about it, Jesus taught me. And God will say, yeah, you figured this out. Now it ties in well to our, our gospel lesson from this morning. Jesus came to that pool of Bethsaida. It was truly a place where people were following their sinful, their flesh and desire. They thought the water was going to heal them. Now remember, there's nothing in the Bible that says that this actually happened, that there, there was ever a healing. The Bible tells us what the pool was to remind us of what people were thinking. That if they could go into this pool, they'd be healed. But there was never a healing recorded. There was never anything said that it worked. One thing that it did tell us, what did the man say? When the water stirred, I couldn't get in there. Nobody would help me. Because everybody else was worried about themselves, weren't they? That's part of the big part of that story. Is that the man had no help from anybody, so he led it by himself. No, the people depended on a stagnant pool of water that stirred once in a while for some odd reason. Because somewhere if somebody said, hey, this is what's happening, and people believe it. We have to be careful. We have to be careful because is it ever too late? John 5 and 6. John 5, 6 and 8. When Jesus saw him lying there and learned that he'd been in this condition for a long time, he asked him, do you want to get well? Sir, then will be right. I have no one to help me to the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone goes down ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. Look at your own lives. Look at where you're at. How many times have you asked people for help and they look at you and say, do it yourself? Our God will never do that to us. Our God will never let us be I mean, as I said, there had been a peace in Jesus' voice that took this man, just took his whole soul. A look of love in his eyes. Something that he could see. Because what did he do? He believed. He got it all. See, that's what happens when we open our hearts and understand what Jesus is telling us. We can find peace. We can find our way. I mean, as Paul writes, the mind, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. Think of that man who laid there and said, who do you think you are? I don't have to believe you. I know what's going on. I know the right way. I'm going to stay right here in my sorrow and anguish and terrible spot because that's where I want to be because the world says it's what we should do that's the difference 
you can open your heart to your faith and say, no, I love you by the world. That's the difference between guided, being guided by the Spirit or guided by flesh. It's truly a self-examination for all of us to understand. No. Our Bible's full of stories of people that gave their hearts and said, I can do this. And it's also full of stories of people that said, no, I'm not going to do this. It's totally, totally a personal decision. You know, I was talking to somebody not too long ago, and they asked about miracles. Well, I don't see miracles anymore, Pastor. And I told him, I said, well, you know what? We might not think we see miracles like we saw in the Bible. I mean, there's a lot of them happening around us we don't notice. But we can never forget that every one of us in this room, every one of us on this planet has seen the biggest miracle of all. We were born. We were created. We were made human beings. <laughs> cells from two different people. The miracle of creation has touched every one of us. Did you ever think of that? When we want miracles, we say we need miracles this way, miracles that way. Every one of us is a miracle in our own right. God says, you don't need to see anymore. Look at yourself. Because I made you perfect. He said, I made you perfect. And you went straight. So I gave you my son who was perfect to bring you back. And all you gotta do is open your heart and say yes. So is it ever too late? Well, like I say, in that, in that spot of death where, where we all know people that we think, well, wow, did they have faith before they died? We can't worry about it because God made that judgment. But in our lives, it's never too late, Paul. See, so Jesus came back to show us the way. He came back to tell us, you're welcome, you're wanted. And the quicker you do it, the more fun it will be. And that's what I always tell people. Yesterday, at the, we went to a graduation of all my cousins. One of my cousins says, how's life? And I said, you know what? It's pretty good now they figured out who God is. I said, it's it's pretty amazing. Now that I figured it out. I said, I've only done this you know, 59 years ago. I think it's maybe a year to, year to get grown up yet. But I said, yeah, I said, if people just understand how perfect and peace and love that Jesus can show us on time, wow, what fun we have. So, if you're ever wondering if you're on the right, right on, on the right path, if you're nervous or scared or however you want to put it, look in the mirror. Ask yourself, what do I, what do I live for? Is it to hurt somebody else or to help somebody else? Is it to open my heart to what the words of the Bible say, or is it to say, no, I don't want to believe it? It's pretty simple to see. But when you see it, you got to know what to do with it. And like I tell you every time, when I stand up here, I talk from experience. Yeah. When you look back and say, wow, fuck what I missed. So I was, I was going to do it like Tell you what. Death is something we we almost come, so we better get our ducks in a row. 
And that isn't for law or for for any kind of a, a hard reason. It's for good. It's for the joy that we can have. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's pray. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, you saw your civilization going astray. So you sent your son to give us a new path, a new guide home. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, you watched your civilization turn him away. Lord Heavenly Father, we just, we just honor and praise you for not saying that's enough. But for just continually saying, please, come back. But you did draw the line. You did say there is a point that I can't call you no more. Heavenly Father, I just ask you to send the Spirit into all of us to, to get us on that right path before we, before we hit that end. And we have to come to you and try to explain why we were sure we were doing it right our own way. Oh, Lord Jesus, you came in your perfect way and guided people home. We thank you for that. Oh, Lord, just bless us and keep us and continue to guide us. Bless our, our country as it struggles to find that way. We just pray this all in, in Jesus' name. Well, Amen. 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 Ah, let us now just talk to our Father in heaven. Talk to our God. Let us, let us just say some prayers. Let your Heavenly Father. Again, you are, you are our creator, our God. You show us miracles over and over every day. Heavenly Father, as I was having a conversation with one of, the, one of your people here, as we watch corn grow, as we watch corn grow inches a day, we forget that that's a miracle. For how can that simple plant make itself twice as big over and over and over again? That's a miracle of, of yours, a miracle of your life. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the miracle of the food, the air, this earth that re regenerates itself through seasons. Thank you for all the miracles we see. So we ask, why don't we see miracles? Help us just to stop and look around. Because you've never quit performing miracles in our lives. Oh, Heavenly Father, we worship and praise you in your mercy. Your Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, as our story today talks, you came to the the weakest, the lowest on earth. And you didn't tell him, you've got to do this, that, or the other thing. You just told him, get him a walk. Because you knew his heart opened up to you. That he listened. And the rest was easy. Oh, dear Jesus, as, as I said, as we see people will, will harden their hearts and say no to you. Help us to, to get them on the right track. Help us to help soften their hearts. I know we can't do it, but we can't hurt. Lord Jesus, continue to be our, our guide, continue to be our, our Savior. The words that are wrote down that you spoke to us are all perfect and true. There's no confusion. We thank you for, for being this straightforward with us and always showing us the way. Oh, Lord Jesus, our Savior, in your mercy. Yeah. And by the Holy Spirit, our power in, in each of us, our, our way to understand. I ask you to fill, fill our congregation, fill our civilization, fill our world with the understanding of who God is. 
Help us to fight that urge of the flesh that causes pain and death. Help us to understand God's perfect plan of love and peace throughout the world. Oh, Holy Spirit, just fill us up as we do need a revival in our country. Holy Spirit, I just ask you to be with all those that are hurting from mental, physical, whatever the disorder. I ask you to be with those that are, are hating, that are hating family or friends or just total strangers. Holy Spirit, help us to open our hearts and, and just live day by day with God's merits. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to take these prayers now to our, our Father in Heaven. We ask you to take them up like incense. Take them up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For we pray all this to you in His name. Amen.